Cold Severe or Little Sustainable Farm. I'm going to be showing you how to make homemade fresh pasta served with a delicious sage butter sauce. I'm also going to be showing you how to grow tomatoes from seed and how to care for them. But my most asked question is how to keep chickens. In last week's episode, I gave you a glimpse of everything that we do here at Broadsphere. I showed you how easy it is to grow your own leaves and we made a delicious garden vegetable risotto. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go back and watch it. Let's go see my gorgeous girls. I always dreamed with the idea of keeping hens they are the most gorgeous animals that you can keep. They have become our pets, 100%, like my little children. So when you first get your chickens, what you need to do is keep them inside in their little house for 24 hours. And then every night, you've got to be religious about it for about a week or two. When it starts getting dark, you've got to gather them around and pop them into their houses and then shut down the shutter of their little house so they know it's time to go to sleep. After about two weeks it's like a miracle. All of a sudden the girls will just go in themselves automatically and you don't even have to worry about that. And then the daily routine is I get up early in the morning. First thing I do with my cup of coffee in my pyjamas is I come down and I open up the hatches and let them out because the minute the sun rises they want to get out. So it's about 6.30 when I leave the chickens out in the morning and then I feed them and make sure they have water and I clean out their houses and I gather all the eggs, wash all the eggs and then we have fresh eggs for the day. Now, housekeeping! <laughs> so let me show you inside their little house. Chickens are quite messy, they poo everywhere, but the great thing about their poo is that it makes amazing compost. So we have this wonderful full circle. They eat grains, of course, in the morning, but then throughout the day when they're later on, they'll be eating you know, all the leftover vegetables from the garden. Um, and then their poo makes amazing compost that grows great vegetables. <laughs> so it's a wonderful cycle. I get such a kick out of that. So I clear out all of the poo and the their straw and here's the lovely cream straw for their beds beep beep come on they get so excited when i clean their house every morning they get really involved so you just want a nice pin there like that and then it's all ready and i've got to do the back of the end of it as well which is where they lay their eggs and this is where the magic happens, where they go in and nestle down and lay their eggs. So, oh, we've got quite a lot of eggs today. This is a Burford brown egg, beautiful golden brown. This is a little olive from the little white ones. This is Cotswold leg bar. They're almost like translucent. They're so beautiful. How many eggs have we got? Three, four, five, six, seven, seven eggs. That's enough to keep me going for the day. And Nolly too. <laughs> and that is all you need to know about keeping your own hens. I have written a blog, which is brilliant because it's got all the points that I spoke about just now. If you've any question, and I promise I will get back to you because I really want everybody to start keeping their own hens, no matter how big or how small your space is. I promise you can do it. Nothing beats the taste of homegrown tomatoes, and there are so many different varieties.
from green tiger ones like these ones to black cherry tomatoes to sun golds the list goes on and on and they're relatively easy to grow so the first thing you want to do is get them seeded and get your seeds propagating so i've got a tray here filled by a little seedling tray inside there the tray is handy because that will collect any excess water it's the best way in my opinion to grow any kind of vegetable from the start so I need to fill the modules with really good quality compost that is peat free and that's important. Now tray and modules are filled and then the next thing you need to do is just make little holes. Just little holes and we're, that's where we're going to pop all of the seeds into. Now that's the holes done. And then you want to pop your seeds in. I've got sun gold tomatoes, which are those lovely yellow cherry tomatoes. Put one seed in one hole. Don't be tempted to put a few in there, because if you get a few seeds in there, they're going to be fighting for the water and the light and everything. So just pop one seed in there. And then once you've got your seeds in, then you just gently brush over the soil to cover the seed lightly. Don't press down, you want it to be loose so that the seed is able to come up. And then you need to water it. And then you pop it in a hot sunny spot so that it will you know, germinate. And then within about two weeks you should see the seedlings coming up. And after a couple of weeks, your tomato plants should come up looking similar to this. This is a chili plant, but it's got the exact same germinating process and it'll look kind of similar. Um, you know when it's ready to be transplanted from the tray into a pot when the roots start gathering and overgrowing at the end like this. Like this is ready to be potted on. And so when you're ready to pot it on, you get a nice big pot like this because it will grow as big as this. And then you need to water it every single day and feed it once a week. Now the feed is really important for tomatoes because they need a lot to be able to produce all of these lovely tomatoes. So when you start seeing the first of the flowers come up, you can relax a bit and go, ah, okay, I am going to start getting tomatoes. Now I use something called tomato, right? But you could also use a seaweed one. Um, this is definitely the best one for tomatoes and it's a dilutable one. So don't water it and then put in the feed. You feed it first and then it's good for the day. And then you just water it every single day after that. So just a really good feed like that. When your tomato plants are about this high, they will start needing support, otherwise they'll just fall over. So you need to put in some sort of a stick, a twig, that is nice and strong, and then put it right down beside it, I would say about three or four inches away from the plant. And then you'll see here, I put twine in, and that will give it enough support so that it can kind of grow happily and not fall over. And the other really important thing with a tomato plant is the pruning of it. So in here, you'll see the main part of the tomato plant growing up. And then there's a little shoot that comes out here. You need to pick this. Otherwise, you won't have enough energy to produce that lovely tomato. Um, always make sure that you never actually prune off or pick off any of the stalks that have the flowers on them because flowers are fruit. And then the last thing is it needs a lovely sunny spot. So wherever it is in your house you've got a sunny spot in a windowsill or in your back garden up against a south facing wall would be brilliant but it needs constant heat and of course constant love and watering and within a few months you will have delicious tomatoes. So get out there and get your tomato seeds. I'm so excited to be making fresh egg pasta. It's one of my favourite things to do. And I'm also going to make a lovely, very simple sage butter sauce to go with it. And now that we've got beautiful chickens that lay gorgeous eggs, 
I'm loving making fresh egg pasta and it's so simple to do. So you need pasta flour, durum pasta flour or zero zero pasta flour and then you make a huge well in the centre. It looks like a nest and it's going to be a nest of eggs. I'm going to crack all of these eggs in here. We are making high density egg pasta. So pop in all of your eggs. It's going to be so full of flavour. It's going to be so delicious. I'm going to pop in five eggs. So the first thing you want to do is slightly whisk the eggs in your well to break up the egg yolks so that when I start tumbling the wall of flour in, it all starts coming together. And then gently bring in the wall. You could do all of this in a blender as well if you wanted to. Something lovely about making something from scratch like this with eggs and flour. And all of a sudden your white flour becomes a yellow dough. And then pop your fork down and start using your hands. Start working it into a dough. Okay, and when it starts forming a little ball like this, and just stop for a second and then get some more flour. Wash your hands with the flour so they get lovely and workable and they're not too sticky. And then you're going to start kneading. So push the dough away from you and then pull it back towards you. Turn it and push again. And then pull it back towards you. Turn it and push again. Pull it back towards you. Turn it again and you need to do that for 10 minutes and this is what you want to get a lovely smooth consistency now this goes into the fridge for a, an hour to set and when it comes out it looks like this so I guess this is the difference from when it goes in to when it comes out all I know is that it's better after an hour in the fridge so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to pop this one into the fridge. Now that the dough is made, the fun begins. We're going to start rolling the pasta. So I'm going to cut this into quarters. This is the pasta machine. And what you have to do is securely pop it on to the side. And then you pop this in like that. And then I've got a little tray of semolina that can go out to straight away. And that is the first setting here. And on we go, we're making pasta! <laughs> Look at the colour of this pasta and the eggs. all becoming really, really lovely and thin. At this point, I'm going to cut it halfway like this. And I'm going to pop it over my little dryer here. And I'm going to cut this one in half as well. So this, you know, you could use for lasagna sheets. Um, you could use it to make ravioli, which maybe we'll do in another episode. But today we are making tagliatelle. on the goes and I'm going to put my tray on the other side and away we go. Hold it as it's coming out because then it will become much easier to transport it onto your little dryer. And so what I usually do is I pop it onto this and then I don't go near it for about 10 minutes. Toss in a little bit of semolina flour and then it goes into the fridge and waits for supper. A 
now it's time to cook the fresh pasta. Your water needs to be boiling and salted and it only takes about a minute to cook. You do not want to overcook your pasta, especially having worked so hard at it. So in goes the fresh pasta. And pop in the semolina too. Give it a good stir. and just let it cook for a minute. Now, while that is cooking, I'm going to chop up my sage for the sage butter. So good with brown butter. Now chop this up really finely. Gorgeous sage, that wonderful, earthy, almost kind of spicy flavor from it as well. Sage is so easy to grow, you know, do it from seed, get a seedling and then pot it up into a nice big pot. It smells amazing. Oh, I'm back in Northern Italy. Oh, for this moment anyhow. Give us another stir. It's nearly cooked. Okay, pasta is cooked. I'm gonna pop it into a bowl to get it out of the water. I am gonna keep a little bit of the cooking water in the pasta and then just pop this to the side. And next on, let's get that butter melted. Once the butter is melted, then I'm going to add in the sage and then lots of Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, and then toss it all through the pasta. I even love the smell of really good quality butter melting. Now this is just a patience game. You want to let it get a little bit brown, but not burnt. So you get that lovely nutty flavor. You let it bubble up. Here it is lovely and brown. I'm gonna add in the sage. Pop, pop, pop. All that beautiful fresh sage. Then just let that kind of crisp up for about 30 seconds and a high heat. And then next, turn it off the heat and then pop in that beautiful fresh pasta with a little bit of that cooking, pasta cooking water too. Using tongs and this, toss it all together with the heat off because that pasta is like a sponge. It will absorb all the gorgeous flavor of the sage and that lovely browned butter. And it's all it's missing is lots and lots of Parmesan cheese. Pop it into the center of your plate. Give it a little twist. Some beautiful Parmesan or any other lovely hard, salty, caramelly cheese that you might have locally to you. Some pepper, a little bit of sea salt, and there we go. Beautiful, fresh tagliatelle pasta with a sage butter. Next week, we are going to be looking at coffee compost and how you can turn your leftover coffee granules into good use in the garden.